Hey, this is a W5HR. I'm going to do this quick supplemental video to part 24. This is going to be like part part 24A. It won't be a tent video though, because this, this has some uh, significance to it. Um, you see, I've got it set on the highest band position, right? And if I hit the uh, spot button, 18, uh, see, that's the bottom end of the foam portion on 17 meters. And look how much good a grid drive I have. I got the full 12 mils. Matter of fact, I had to back it down just a hair. So I've got it. That's the highest band this thing will ever operate on, on the hand bands. And uh, hey, that did it. So uh, now I noticed when I went down the 20 meters on it, it, it the power dipped. And I, it may just be that I need to tune the tank circuits. So it's gonna take a little bit of adjustment. But I also know if I put the old tubes back in, the, like the old multiplier tubes back in this thing, the power is going to come up. And like I said, I have not tuned the exciter, so the tubes I have in there now may work. And so I don't know. I just need to align everything, and that 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 might just take care of the that, the problem between you know eighteen and uh, what is it uh, fourteen something. Let me uh, let me see if I can back. Plus, see this thing's out of alignment. See, it says it's supposed to be on seventeen some odd megacycles, and I'm on. 18 so see this thing's off so i still like i said it needs to be aligned that right there may solve the problem but uh let me see let's go down to 14 because i noticed the power dip it was on 13 something before and the power was dipping so there's yeah there's 14 2 14 3 that's about right but it's probably going to be off yeah see it's 15 so i need to uh i need to uh dial it down some so let me do that let me stop the video and do that real quick okay i'm back i was trying to dial the frequency to uh uh you know this uh 20 meter band c14.2 whatever i just put it between there and you know somewhere down around there close enough and then with the uh the pot up all the way for the grid drive you know the, for the screen voltage to the uh 6000 tube it's just a little low and I know I can get that up. That's not a problem. First of all, I have not tuned it. That tuning will probably take care of that anyway. So that's the only thing I've noticed is it's a little low down on 40 meters, but it's it's plenty. It's high enough on uh, 17 meters. If I um, you know if I run the pot up all the way, I can even back it down slightly. But like I said, there's there's two ways I can get that power up a little more. That 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 grid current, that grid drive is I can change the tubes in this thing or I can align it first or a combination of the two. And uh, the twin lead, I know one more thing that'll get it up just a hair a bit more is that twin lead, it's hanging down a little bit. I can probably cut a few inches more off of that ladder line, just a little bit more. I can make it a little tighter in there and I know that'll get it up a little more. But I I know it's already not going to be a problem because I I know if I if I tune this thing or I change out the tubes it's going to come up automatically so it's not even an issue it'll come up I just would like to be able not have to have the the uh, the pot up all the way you know, completely for the highest two bands but if if I have to I have to but at least that's you can see why now I'm going to forego trying to make it work on SSB because. I'd have to run that ladder line down through uh, some relays and cut. It's just not, it's just, it's, there's going to be loss. And the toroids didn't work. So uh, that's kind of uh, where I am on this. And, uh, but I'm getting it to work on all the bands. Now on 160, for some reason, let me see if it does it again. Hold on. I, of course, I have to back it down, doggone it. It's hard to do this with one, with one hand. I have to use my thumb on the spot button and then I got to, Kind of, ay -ay -ay. Oh, boy, it's hard to do it with one hand. That's the problem. There we go. So where am I on frequency? What does that say? That's one. Okay, that's that's kilocycles. It's not reading megahertz. Oh, by the way, uh. When I right when I shut the video off, the one I make when, when I was when I was recording right before I stopped it and started this one, I killed the breaker. I realized right away that as soon as I try to fire up this RF deck and try to do the you know get the whole thing alive, it's gonna keep popping the breaker. These outlets here on the, on the wall 
are going to a 15 amp breaker out there on the panel out on the outside of the garage outside and it's the 15 amp breaker's too light i'm gonna have to pull that panel off and change it to at least a 20 because i right now i won't even be able to get this thing to transmit unless i take an extension cord and find another outlet and maybe run it out to the garage or something just so i could go to a higher current outlet but the 15 amp breaker is not going to work so i'm going to have to bump it up to a 20. 20 will probably work because i think they the uh the, that 15 amp breaker is working this entire room and i'm not sure about the bathroom here if it's running the uh, exhaust fan and all that that's a big problem so i'm going to have to do something about that if that's the case but uh i don't think it is i think that one's separate i just think the problem is is that that 15 amp breaker the, the inrush on this thing when you go to you fire things up and that's just with the exciter right so it's pretty it's pretty high it's just it, the 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 inrush of current when you do anything is just popping the breaker so i'll have to switch it to like a 20 amp maybe 25 i normally will, will not you know I've, I've usually whenever i have this problem i'll bump it up like five amps and that's a, fi a higher you know five amp higher breaker i'll go from like 15 to 20 or 20 to 25 depending on what's in there already and I usually don't like to go any higher than five uh, five amps higher because that usually will fix it. But we'll see what happens. Maybe it won't. I might have to have an outlet wired down to this this room here just by itself for the the transmitter. If I do, oh well. But anyway, uh, that's where I am on this. Let me uh, let me see if I can get it to uh, get the right. F see if I because when I reset the breaker outside, it it because when the power went off, I I lost my uh, setting on the counter here. Yeah, 1.779. See, so that's... Now, the oscillation finally went away. It finally... What happened is when I first, a little while ago, before I started the video before this one, you know, before I even stopped it, before I even started that one, uh, it, uh, I was, when I transmit on 160 or try to get the thing, you know, the exciter output to, the, get, to, get, to get the grid drive, it was oscillating. I was trying to... I kept and I was really and I realized I was getting I was hearing arcings what I was hearing so what I did was I came back around the back side of the transmitter and I hooked up that the one ground the other connection which is going to be for the PTT so when that gets grounded the thing will the exciter will come on when the high voltage comes up to everything else and uh when I, I so I grounded that right there and I, my video got interrupted by a phone call I hate when that happens somebody will send me a text message or a phone call and I just here I spent a long time making the video and it got I got disrupted. So here we go. Uh but what I was saying was when I was uh before I got cut off here, um uh, when I started grounding it, I started seeing the sparks and it was like you could tell it was arcing and I just held it there long enough and all of a sudden it stopped. And I'm like, huh. So I ungrounded that light, I grounded it again, it was gone. So now when I come back around here, every time I try to try you know make this thing output on the you know, the lowest band, right, done on 160, that oscillation's gone away. And I'm thinking what happened is there might have been maybe a little tiny piece of wire down in the exciter someplace, maybe like a little fray of wire, maybe a bad solder joint, maybe something got bridged, maybe there's a cap. And then maybe I, when it, when, it, when, it, when it was arcing in there and I just held it and it went away, maybe I burnt whatever it was, was that was causing it loose. So the, the only way I'm going to know is if I go ahead and uh, power this thing down, let it sit for a couple hours and turn it back on and see if the same thing happens again. But it looks like now it's completely gone no matter what I do. So let me see if uh, if that actually is gone now. If that's a good sign, if it is, that means I won't have to get any exciter and fix anything for 160. Even though I probably won't use it on 160 at the start because what I'm going to have to do is is my plate tuning cap. I removed a bunch of plates off that cap because the because years ago when I used to operate this thing, the plates uh, were just barely meshed. I had the corner of it just barely meshed for 40 meters, so I never could use it up above 40 meters. So I never got I never got that far with it. So what I did was in San Jose a few years ago, I removed the whole. I took that variable cap out. I removed a whole bunch of plates to get the minimum, you know, to get the uh, C down for the higher bands. And I don't know if I've got it. I I calculated it out. I used the Pi network. I think I used that uh, 
Who's, the, who's that hand that did that tone software? They had that Pi-L calculator. I think I calculated it, what it was supposed to be, and I think I adjusted it somewhere close for that. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I may have to remove that, that variable cap again and, and maybe remove another plate or two or maybe add another one or two back. So I'm not sure exactly if that's, you know, if it's going to be exactly right or not. But what I'm saying is since I removed those plates, I don't have enough plate tuning C for 160. So what I'd have to do is I would ha have to add a little vacuum relay in the back or some kind of a relay to, to actually parallel a cap across that, you know, the cr across this tuning cap to make it work on 160. And that's not an issue. I've got a space right behind all that where I can actually do it. I can actually tie a cap in there and I can add a cap, you know, to ground over it. I can just, I can just would turn the relay on, or what I'd do is I'd probably maybe figure out a way to tie into this switch here, this selector switch or something to where I'm, when I switch it to 160, it automatically clicks that relay. Now, what I was going to do with this RF deck, since I've decided to forego the uh, SSB operation on it, is I'm, I'm just going to make this for grid leak like this and then Fix, fixed grid bias. I'm just going to modify that trend, that supply that I already have in there for just fixed bias. So that way I can go back and forth. Maybe when I go to grid leak, it'll be like Superman position or something. <laughs> but it'd be nice to be able to go between fixed bias and, and grid leak. So I can use that 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 position, that switch in that slot for, for something like that. Since I've already got the supply in there, it'll be fine. Or I might be able to make it I might be able to make it, I, ha I have that 1625 clamp tube in there, but there might be a way, I, after I get this thing working, I could think if there was a possible way to uh, make it to where uh, I could, uh, oh, what am I thinking? Um, uh, I drew a blank. Anyway, I'll, uh, <laughs> oh, I must be getting old. Alzheimer's? Nah, don't think so. Just still kind of early in the morning. Uh, what was I going to say there? Uh, I was thinking I could, uh, make this, uh, not just for fixed grid, for, for, for fixed bias, but, oh yeah, to where, cause I have the 1625, now it finally popped back in my head. Sorry it took so long. Now that I, since I have that 1625 clamp tube in there, maybe I could figure out a way to where if the grid drive goes away, it just automatically switches to the fixed supply or something. That's another possibility. Maybe I could make this like a threshold adjust to where I could adjust that threshold or something, you know? Hey, so I, I do have a, a couple possibilities. I'll probably just start out. I'll just make this, this switch here for the, uh, for, for fixed bias to gr the grid leak and go back and forth. And then I'll think about the other at some other point in time. I'll, I'll draw it up and I'll, maybe I'll come up with an idea that I can use that for the other. And maybe I could come up with something really, really slick because the way the T368 exciter was, when that 1625 tube clamps it, when you lose grid bias, you, when that when the grid of that 1625 starts, you know, comes up back to zero and it stops going negative, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna uh, uh, start going down through the dropping resistors, and those dropping resistors are gonna get hot. So, and what they did in the, the uh, T368 transmitter is, is they had like a uh, what do you call one of those thermal relays to where when those, when it went to the clamp tube and it went down through that dropping resistor, it, uh, it eventually would open up the relay. So maybe I could do the same thing to where that supply I have in there, I could make it to where when it gets to a certain, certain threshold, it'll just switch it like that. So that's a possibility. So nothing's going to go to waste. Everything I did that I had to undo, you know, here and there in this thing, I'm, I'm making use of the, uh, the hole and the, uh, control and the supply for something else so that's uh i think that's it for now let me uh, i'm going to turn this thing off and i want to see if it uh if the oscillation's completely gone now on uh 160 so i'm going to let this thing cool down for a couple hours and come back in and try it again and see what happens but uh i have grid drive on everything now except for 20 meters and i think that's due to the uh, tuning it works fine on 17 but 20 it's a little light it's a little low it's about two mils too low so i think aligning the exciter will probably take care of that if not i'll just pop some other tubes in one thing i can do is and i know this will work this is always like one of those fail safe things if you have uh a, an output of something that's a little low no matter what you do you just can't seem to get it up pop sylvanias 
I could probably get online, I could find a set of Sylvanias for the multipliers and pop them in there and that'd solve the problem real quick. So I know how to I know how to get around it because I know which brands do what. And that's another trick of the trade, you know, for people who've worked on this stuff for years and years, old vacuum tube stuff, that that's, you know, Sylvania's run hot. So that's another another thing I could do to bump it up even more. So that's it for now. This is W5HRO with this uh what I call the supplemental video of part 24.